Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Buck Rogers is on the air, brought to you by the makers of Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle, those delicious frozen confections on a stick. And now a message from the famous winner of the Typical American Boy Contest, Popsicle Pete. Hello, everyone. Say, I wish you were here at the studio. What a room full of gifts you'd see. All for you. Roller skates, table tennis, cameras, fishing tackle, jewelry, dolls. Gosh, hundreds of things. You know how to get them? Just eat popsicle, creamsicle, and fudgicle. And save the bags. Well, could anything be easier? Enjoy a great, big, delicious popsicle, fudgicle, or creamsicle every day. And get wonderful gifts for the bags. A mother knows these frozen confections on a handy stick are pure and good for you. Made fresh every day. And boy, do they taste good. Refreshing. Nourishing. So big and only five cents. Don't forget, save bags every day for swell gifts. Get that wonderful free popsicle gift list in your rice cream store. Tells you how many bags you need for the gifts you want. And it's got a free coupon worth ten bags. And now for another thrilling episode of Buck Rogers. Back in 1919, you know, Buck was in the lower workings of an abandoned mine near the city of Pittsburgh when suddenly the walls caved in and a peculiar gas caused him to be held in a state of suspended animation for 500 years. Finding himself in the strange and exciting world of the 25th century, Buck quickly adapted himself to the use of rocket-powered spacecraft and other marvelous scientific developments that would seem almost impossible in our present day. With Wilma Deering and Dr. Hewer, Buck has visited Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, Saturn, and even far off Pluto. His life has been just one amazing adventure after another. Now, in our last episode, you remember, Buck, Wilma, and Dr. Hewer we're discussing a new instrument for use on a rocket plane when suddenly... But let's join them. They're in Dr. Hewer's laboratory. Okay? Then here we go. 500 years into the future. Yes, Wilma? If this new instrument does what I feel sure it will... There'll be practically no limit to the speed a rocket ship can attain immediately upon taking off. Good night. Imagine getting into the control cabin, opening the power lever, and going a couple of thousand miles an hour just like that. Well, when can we test it out, Dr. Hewer? Have you already got it installed on a rocket ship? No, Buck. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even have it yet. Huh? Uh, one's been made up all right. One we'll use for the test, but it isn't right here yet. I don't understand, Doctor. Oh, yes, sir. Can't we get it here, the... The sooner we can start trying it out, the sooner we can break the monotony of just sitting around here doing that. Wait, wait, Buck. Listen. Yes, Doctor, I hear it, too. Oh, well, yeah. Hear it? Yes, sir, but what under the sun is it? Look here, out of the window. Well, good heavens, Wilma. It's coming right down this way. Wilma! Good night. Hey, come on, folks. Whoever's in that rocket ship that crashed out there is going to need help. Yes, Buck. Come on. Hey, would you, Buck? It looked to me as though it deliberately cracked up right outside this laboratory. Well, that's right, Buck. It certainly didn't look like a ship out of control. Well, you can hardly call it an ordinary landing, and we'd better give whoever's in it... The... Hey, look, it's a Martian ship. Right. See, the metal door on the side of it is open. Wait. Wait. It... It's all right. Wait? All right, Doctor. Well, the people in that ship Wait, must be... Buck. <laughs> and listen... No, it's just exactly like I told you to be. Here we are, safe and sound, and right on time. Black Barney! <laughs> oh, well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> I still don't think we needed to land that fast, Mr. Barney. And Willie's with him. You see? He made me skin my knee against the control board. Well, what difference does that make? We had to get down here into a hurry, didn't we? My knee hurts, too. And the only way was to land in a hurry, so we... Huh? See? Say, you did kind of get scratched up there now, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, here, Willie, you you just put your arm around my shoulder and I'll carry you right straight over to a hospital. Yeah. Oh, it didn't hurt that bad, Mr. Barney. Well, what do you mean it ain't hurt that bad? Only I just thought maybe you didn't care. Oh. And anyhow, what about that important package you have on board here for Dr. Hewer? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, sir, we, we better get that gyro thing in Dr. Hewer's laboratory right this minute. 
We'll take care of it, Barney. Huh? Oh, 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 hello, Doctor York. Hello. Hello, hello, hello Willie. Hello. How are you? Uh, uh, say, Doctor, uh, how'd you know we have got here? Oh, don't worry, <laughs> Barney. After that landing, the whole city knows you're here. You should say so. It's a wonder you didn't break your neck. Well, Doctor York was in a hurry to get a hold of that uh, gyro thing we brung down from Mars, so I, I, I figured the quicker we landed with it, the better. Well, I hope it's all right after that landing. Oh, sure it is, Doctor. Uh, I got it stowed away in the shock insulated storage cabin. Oh, fine. Then my suggestion is that we fly right over to the spaceport. We'll have the gyrocosmic relativator installed on a ship I have waiting for it over there. Oh, good. Then we can go right ahead and test it out. Yes. Well, Willie here needs to expose his bruised knee to a healing ray for a few minutes. Oh, that's all right, Lieutenant Wilmer. No, sir, now, Willie. You do what Lieutenant Wilmer says to do. It doesn't hurt, though. Much? Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, Barney... My little rocket roadster is parked out back of the laboratory building. Yeah. So you and Willie hop into that and go over to the hospital where they'll take care of that bruised knee. And meanwhile, we three will take this ship of yours over to the spaceport and install the gyrocosmic relativator on whatever sort of craft Dr. Hewer has waiting for it over there. Okay, Captain Rogers, we'll do it. Uh, come on, Willie. Come yes, on. sir. See you later. All right, Willie. Uh, only, uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, listen, Doctor. Yes, Barney? Are you, uh... Are you three going to try out that gyro thing, or are you going to have somebody else do it for you? Why, why, we'll do it, of course. Well, uh... Are you sure it won't be, uh, too dangerous, Doctor? Dangerous? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no, no. <laughs> oh, don't you laugh, Doctor. If it'll do all the things you told me by radio it would do, why... It... It sounds to me like it might be dangerous or stuff. No, 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 not at all. And if you hustle over to the hospital with Willie, you can probably get out of the space force before we take over that. Yeah, okay, Doctor. You're okay. Hey, come on, Willie. And come on, Wilma, Doctor. Uh, let's get aboard here and over to the space force. Yes, Doc. Uh, now that the time to test this gyro cosmic relativator is here, I, I'm almost as excited about it as you appear to be. All set, Buck. There's the metal door. Right. Want to take the controls, Doctor? All right, Buck. Here we go. Huh. Never know this ship has been through that crash landing, would you? Well, I don't know whether you've noticed it, Buck, but all these Martian ships are made very solidly. Yeah, that's true. They're, they're not very fast, but tough. Well, isn't that perfectly natural? They're all made under Barney's supervision. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, while you're steering us over to the spaceport, Doctor, I'm going to unpack the gyrocosmic relativator back here. Then we can begin installation on the other ship just as soon as we get there. That's a good idea, Buck. And I'll radio ahead to Joe Martin there at the spaceport to have men and tools ready in order to save time. Calling Joe Martin at spaceport. This is Dr. Hewer calling Joe Martin at the spaceport. Calling Joe Martin. Pay the bank of photoelectric cells into that aperture in the main bank of rocket tubes. Yes, sir, Dr. York. All right, Al. Swing it right over here. That's it. And as soon as you're through with the installation, have all this machinery cleared away. Yes, sir. Should be all set for the tryout in a couple of minutes now, shouldn't it, Doctor? Yes, Doc. Just as soon as they finish bolting down that side plate. Oh, good. I'm anxious to get started with this experimental flight. Wonder if Barney and Willie will get here before we take off. Barney apparently was quite interested in the gyrocosmic relative. Uh, now, how about this uh, power line, Doctor? Oh, plug it into outlet number one there, Buck. All oh, right, sir. There. there it is. There it is, Doctor. It's all right. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Buck? Oh, nothing. I just scratched the back of my hand a bit, that's all. All ready for the takeoff now, Doctor. Fine, Joe. Uh, tell your men to clear away and we'll go right up. Yes, sir. They're on their way back to the main hangar now. Good. Well... Buck, yeah. Wilma. Say, look here, Buck. You've taken a really big piece of skin off the back of your hand here. Oh, forget it. Let's get up in the air in this rocket ship. Yes, sir, you're as bad as Willie was. Joe. Yes, sir, Lieutenant? Don't you have a healing ray in your office? Oh, sure, Lieutenant. Oh, forget it, Wilma. It'll be all right. No, sir. Come on over to the office with me, and we'll put your hand under the healing ray for a minute. Well, but... Oh, okay. I'll go along with you so I can report to Central Radio Bureau and tell them where we are. It's this way, right over here. Silly to worry about a little scratch like this, Wilman. 
I'm anxious to get a law for that gyrocosmic relativator on the ship. Uh, right in here, Lieutenant at Wilma. The healing ray's right there in the corner. Here, Buck. Now put your hand under it while I turn it on. Oh, okay. There, now. And don't turn it off until your hand is completely healed. No, let's see. Where's this radio unit of yours, Joe? Right here, Doctor. Oh, excuse me, sir. There's a call coming in on it now. Central Spaceport. Joe Martin speaking. Central Radio Bureau. Have you seen anything of Dr. Hewitt? We've been trying to locate him all over the city. Why, sure. He's right here. Here, Doctor. This call's for you. Oh, thank you. This is it Dr. Hewitt? Urgent message for you, Dr. Hewitt. From the captain of the rocket police. Yes? It says that one of the air guards has just discovered that your laboratory has been forcibly entered and completely run What? Why... I, I just left there a few minutes ago. Well, it was only discovered a couple of minutes ago. Shall I tell the captain you'll be right over? No. No, as long as the rocket police are already there, no more damage will be done. I'm engaged in a very important experiment here that I can't leave at the moment. But I'll go back to my laboratory just as soon as I've finished with it. Meantime, they'll know what measures need to be taken and can proceed accordingly. Yes, sir. Signing off. Signing off. Well... I can't say that I like that. Say, maybe we'd better postpone this test, Doctor. No, no, Buck. It's the most important thing we have at hand right now, and we'd better go through with it. Well, whatever you say. But I wonder who could have done it. Surely Black Barney no, wouldn't no. have. No, Powerful old Barney might absentmindedly pull a locked door off its hinges to get in, but certainly he wouldn't be involved in ransacking my laboratory. And anyhow, he's probably out at the test ship wondering why we don't get started. Yes. Well, then, come along. Uh, let's... Uh, better wait a second, Doctor. It may be another call for you. Central State. Oh, yes, sir. It's for you, Captain Rogers. Okay, Joe, thanks. Buck Rogers speaking. Central Radio, Captain. Order from the office of the President. The entire rocket police fleet has been placed at your disposal. What? All regular patrol ships are standing by awaiting your orders. You have full authority to proceed along any lines you may see fit. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Is this because of the trouble at Dr. Hewer's laboratory? No, sir. Something happened to one of the guards at the municipal prison. The automatic alarm system was completely wrecked. The guard found lying in a storage room under the effects of a paralysis ray. Great Scott, man. Who did it? Killer Kane and our daylight. And they've escaped. Doctor, Wilma, did you hear that? Yes, Buck. The worst criminals the solar system has ever known. How could Kane and Ardella have escaped? I don't know, but one thing's sure, we're going to have to call off this test flight. Not at all, Buck. Huh? Now we must go ahead with it. But, Doctor... It'll take far more than the ordinary rocket ship to track down that pair. And that's just exactly what our gyrocosmic relativator will provide. Doctor, you is right, Buck. Okay, then. Come on, let's go. There's the ship. Just waiting for us, and we can take off in it immediately. Well, come on. No, look! There it goes! There goes our ship! Well, somebody beat them to it. If you ask me, there's trouble ahead for our friends. Fellas and girls, is each day bringing you closer to those wonderful presents Popsicle Pete picked out for you? Are you saving bags for books and cameras, musical instruments, fishing tackle, dolls, jewelry, all the exciting things you want? Save bags every day from Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle. You'll soon have just the gifts you want. Say, kids. Did you ever try a creamsicle? Gee, it's wonderful. A great big chunk of delicious ice cream on a stick, coated with thick, chewy butterscotch. Or you can get creamsicle coated with chocolate fudge or fresh fruit flavors. They're wholesome, too, full of the kind of nourishment we all need. And only a nickel for a great big creamsicle on a handy stick. Don't forget to save the bags for those swell gifts. 